chapter five of early days of old oregon by katherine barry judson this librivox recording is in the public domain chapter five when captain gray crossed the terrible bar out from boston harbor in september seventeen ninety went a little sailing ship laden with many things bound for the northwest coast of america on board was a cargo of coffee tea chocolate sugar flour salt beef salt pork butter cheese molasses and twenty seven thousand pounds of hard dry ship's bread besides food captain gray had also on board sea coal bars of iron and bars of lead gunpowder shot guns indian trading goods tar and pitch and two thousand bricks there were thirty men in the crew and the vessel was armed with ten large ships guns these were for defence against pirates and indians this was the second voyage of captain robert gray to nootka sound the first time two years before this was when he stood with his crew and watched in amazement the launching of captain Mears's coasting vessel the northwest america gray and kendrick who were sent out by the same firm of shipowners and fur traders had exchanged vessels that fall kendrick now had the smaller ship the lady washington while gray had the larger the columbia captain gray in the columbia had taken the furs of that first voyage over to china sold them there bought tea and had taken that around the horn to boston now he was off for his second voyage with iron and lead and bricks in his hold the lead was for bullets the iron was for trading after the blacksmith had made it into small articles such as fish hooks armlets and bracelets chisels and many other things but can you imagine why he took bricks fancy carrying two thousand bricks from boston down the eastern side of both north and south america then around the dangerous horn and all the way up the western side of the two americas again two thousand bricks are just enough to build a chimney captain gray intended to build a small fort similar to captain mirrors's because he was intending to remain on the coast that next winter he did build a log cabin at Clayoquot Sound and spent the winter there. Now, when Captain Gray, just out from Boston on his second voyage, reached Oregon, he began trading up and down the coast, running into little inlets and harbors and bays wherever he saw an Indian village. Like all other captains, he was always on the lookout for a friendly sail in these lonely waters. One morning, just at dawn, in the spring of 1792, he was hailed by a british exploring vessel it was under the command of captain george vancouver who had with him a smaller ship as a tender vancouver invited gray to visit him so the yankee went aboard the british vessel for a friendly chat they sailed into the straits in a thick misting rain and while the captains and officers talked of possible rivers and bays and islands the crews fished in vain from the wet slippery decks for a mess of fish vancouver wanted to know whether nootka sound was on an island he talked also about a mysterious river of the west which was supposed to be near there gray said that a few days before near forty six degrees he had stopped at a large bay which he thought must be the mouth of a large river the ocean water nearby was discolored with mud and that was a proof but vancouver had also passed that bay a few days before he said the muddy water might come from some small river near by but there was no large river there now this bay or was it a river near forty six degrees was the very one which had puzzled so many other people the spanish explorer had said it was a river and named it the rio san roque captain cook saw nothing at all captain Mears thought it was a river tried to sail into it was afraid of the breakers and sailed away saying it was a bay of the ocean captain gray thought it must be the mouth of a large river captain vancouver was sure it was only a salt-water bay now gray was a yankee and rather an independent man if that really was a river he wanted to know it and there must be many furs in it so when his ship sailed out of the straits of san juan de fuca after his visit with vancouver was over he went straight south to that bay back gray went he had waited there before trying to get in now he waited again 
indeed he waited for several days because the wind was blowing and the waves were high gray's plan was daring seven miles long were those sandbars outside the river mouth and three miles wide with only a narrow winding channel between them as he found afterwards all the mouth of the river was choked with these sandbars far outside of cape disappointment the rushing water from the river met the waves thrown upon the bar by wind and tide and the breakers were terrific roaring and thundering day after day the white waves crashed and beat over the bars in the quiet of the forested hills the uproar of the waters could be heard for miles it was certain death to any one caught in those white foaming breakers then one day may eleventh seventeen ninety two the wind quieted down the waves were a little calmer and though the breakers still dashed and thundered gray thought he could see a channel in went the little sailing ship depending only upon the breeze and the skill of the captain in through that narrow winding unknown channel into the unknown bay carefully gray steered while his men sounded the depth of water until at last they were through the breakers and inside then the sailors found at once as they dipped up the water that it was sweet fresh river water and not salt water had it been merely a bay the water would have been salt captain robert gray had discovered the river of the west which indians many years before had said flowed into the bitter waters indians in their canoes now came out over the broad gleaming river dancing blue in the sunshine as captain gray sailed up the river for fifteen miles or so at last he anchored and then they had a busy time the indians were trading furs and fish and roots the armorer was hammering at his forge working up those iron bars carpenters were making repairs painters were painting and caulking the ship some of the sailors were washing down the ship and others were refilling the water casks with fresh water on a tuesday four days after they entered captain gray and his mate quote, went on shore to take a short view of the country end quote, so the old log-book says they did more they took possession of the country in the name of the united states of america that really did not amount to much because gray was only a private fur trader and no official report was ever made by him to the government so far as we know gray hoisted on the columbia river the american flag and planted there on the shore some new england pine tree shillings under a tree and named the river after his plucky little ship they named the two capes also one was to be cape hancock and the other cape adams after two famous new england men but the old name cape disappointment was the one which after all stuck to the northern headland pine tree shillings were just the thing to plant in the oregon country there were a few pines along the columbia river though not many but all the hills which rolled back from this broad glorious stream were black with dense forests of other cone-bearing trees spruce and fir and hemlock another interesting thing is that this river on the western coast was discovered just three hundred years after columbus discovered america fourteen ninety two and seventeen ninety two and that the united states was only nine years old when the american flag was hoisted in the river and on the shore captain gray stayed in the river some ten days trading with the swarms of indians who came out to his ship and getting a fresh start the old log-book told just which days were bright and sunny and which were cloudy or rainy but the old log does not tell us half as much as we want to know about the wonderful crossing of that terrible bar and of the stay in the river gray's daring in facing those breakers and entering the river gave the united states the very first right she had to claim any part of the oregon country before that spain and great britain were the only ones having any real right to it the crossing of that fearsome bar was a daring thing to do with only a sailing vessel tossed this way and that by the wind or the currents to face those terrific breakers which roared and dashed and thundered at the entrance of the columbia in eighteen o five the lewis and clark expedition came overland from st louis and they discovered and explored part of the river from the other direction End of chapter five